With the return of the world that was, Warhammer the Old World gave me the opportunity to collect and paint the Night Goblin army I've always wanted. Now I want to share with you my finished Night Goblins and show you how you can also collect, build and paint your own Warhammer Old World army. We'll talk about where to start, how we can approach painting a large number of miniatures as well as adding character and making your army more unique to you. And if you stick around until the end I'll show you how best to store and transport your army. Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael and I want to show off my Night Goblins and show you how you can collect and paint your own army for Warhammer the Old World. Warhammer the Old World is set in the time before Age of Sigmar and is actually a new updated version of Games Workshop's Warhammer Fantasy Battles. The way the Old World is played means that the armies we collect and build are going to feel very different. So I want to show you how you can approach building and painting your own Old World army and hopefully give you the inspiration and confidence to get started. But before we do that, I do want to thank the channel members and patrons who very generously support Tabletop Ready and make these tutorials possible. You can also support the channel and the content I make by giving the videos a like and leaving a comment. I really love hearing about your own hobby. And throughout the tutorial, all the paints and brushes I use will be shown on the screen as I use them, and I'll also link them in the video's description along with any other equipment you see me using, with affiliate links to where you can get them. The first thing to do is decide which army you want to collect, paint and use in games. For me, I always knew I was going to collect and build a Night Goblin army. They have so much character, and I love the miniatures and I really enjoy the random nature of their playstyle, and the ability to cause absolute chaos on the battlefield, bouncing around on squigs, and unleashing absolute devastation with fanatics. We're going to enjoy the hobby more when we collect and build an army we're invested in and excited about and for this we need to think about what motivates us in the hobby. Are you someone who likes to build, paint and collect an army for how it looks and the miniatures you get to paint? Maybe you're someone who is motivated by the lore and setting and really enjoys having an army based on their background and style. For some people the rules and mechanics for an army are important to them because they prefer the gaming side of the hobby. Whichever it is, it's a good idea to think about and spend time doing some research. So I knew I wanted to collect a Night Goblin army, but I knew I needed a plan to get it painted starting with what I wanted it to look like. I've always preferred to paint my miniatures to be nice and vibrant, with bright and bold colours, and I always look for inspiration from how miniatures were painted in earlier editions of the games. The edition I was most interested in was the 4th edition of Warhammer Fantasy. You can see the miniatures were painted with more saturated colours which were very visually striking. The way the miniatures were painted were also technically much simpler compared to how they're painted currently which I knew was going to make painting lots of goblins and squigs more achievable. So now all I had to do was buy some miniatures. And I know it would be cool to collect all the older miniatures but I'm a huge fan of the modern Gloomspite Gits range that was updated for Age of Sigmar. It's all plastic, a lot easier to get hold of, and I like the more dynamic poses. The idea of using an older style of painting on a newer range of miniatures was also very appealing to me. And you can approach painting other armies in the same way I have with my Night Goblins, because a lot of the old world armies do have an updated range for Age of Sigma. Now I had a plan and some miniatures, I was ready to start building and painting. However, the old world is played with miniatures on square bases, not the round bases they come with. If you need to get square bases for your miniatures, I have linked where I get mine in the description, and all the base sizes you need are listed under the unit entry in the relevant book to your army. When the bases turned up, I could work on getting everything built and ready for painting, and if you need some help doing that yourself and want to know how I go about doing it, I do have a dedicated video on the channel showing you how. It can be daunting and very overwhelming thinking about all those miniatures you need to get painted for your army, but there are some things we can do to make the whole process a lot more straightforward. When it came to building the miniatures, to keep it simple I wanted to fully assemble everything. The only thing I did keep separate was some of the squig heads to paint the inside of the mouths. And before we start painting, it's a good idea to undercoat our miniatures, and because I wanted to achieve that retro vibrant aesthetic, I knew the only choice was White Scar, but obviously choose what works best for you. As well, I do like to have my miniatures mounted to make the painting process more comfortable, and for this you can buy some plastic shot glasses which are a very cost effective way of doing this. 
with everything built and undercoated, we're now ready to start painting, which I decided to do using contrast paints. I chose contrast paints because they're great for painting large amounts of miniatures in a short amount of time. This is because they're formulated to provide a base colour as well as creating definition in one application. They also have a lot of very saturated colours available which are going to be great for our bright and vibrant scheme we're trying to achieve. I'm a huge fan of using contrast paints. They're very accessible for people helping get miniatures painted and they can also be used alongside the general acrylic paints giving us more ways to be creative in achieving different styles and effects. When using contrast paints, we want to avoid going over areas we've already applied the contrast and we want to use enough to cover areas comfortably. And even though we don't need to thin contrast paints, I do recommend working from a dry palette so we can control how much we have on our brush. There will be times we do want to thin our contrast paint though and we can do that either with a medium or just some water. We would thin a contrast paint to weaken its strength giving us a more desaturated lighter tone once it's dried. Take your time making sure we finish each area or detail before moving on to the next for best results, as the contrast dries pretty quickly. For my night goblins, I started by thinning some skeleton horde for any teeth and rope. Any boots, weapons and famously any horns a miniature may have I use bile red. And I did apply this a second time to achieve that richer red you see used in the earlier images of miniatures. For any moons, Iron George Yellow was used. When it came to painting the skin, I did try a few colours, but I didn't think any were a good match for what I was after. So after some trial and error, I came up with my own mix, using an equal amount of Striking Scorpions Green and Mantis Warriors Green. After the skin, I painted any robes using Black Legion. Using contrast paints can be tricky, and mistakes are going to be made. We can neaten things up first using White Scar to cover up those mistakes, and then reapply our contrast colours where needed. I intentionally kept the colour palette very simple. This not only helps get everything painted, but also adds to the character and overall look of an army, creating more of an impact visually. Silver details were painted lead belcher with a non oil wash. And if there are any gold details, these were painted using Retributor armour with Reichland Flesh Shade wash. To paint any squigs, I again started with the teeth using thin down skeleton horde. Then any tongues and gums I used for lupus pink. If you want a lighter pink, you can thin down the lupus pink as well, like I have here on my mangler squig. For the skin, I did want it to stand out against the other red details, so I used blood angels red. But this wasn't really vibrant enough, so I applied bowl red over the blood angels red to achieve that much richer, deeper red I was after. There are plenty of other smaller details on the miniatures we need to paint, but we just need to choose a colour we like or think would work for that detail. And once I had everything painted, it was time to do some highlighting. The idea behind highlighting is to bring out any edges, areas and raised details to draw our attention to them and to make these features stand out more. If you need help with highlighting and want to know how I do it and how to get better at it, I've got a dedicated video on the channel showing you how. For me, highlighting really does make a difference to the look of our miniatures and it's a very achievable skill and it's worth spending the time and effort practicing as it also helps to improve our brush control and hand-eye coordination. I am keeping things simple, only doing line highlights which is more manageable with a large amount of miniatures to paint. To start, highlighted all the robes with Femrisine Grey. Then other details that were also black, I chose to highlight them using Dawnstone. All the bright red details like boots, weapon handles and horns are highlighted using Fire Dragon Bright. Teeth are highlighted with Pallid Witch Flesh, Moons with Dawn Yellow and the squigs were highlighted using Tau Light Okra. For any metallic details, these can be highlighted with Stormhouse Silver. And once you're done highlighting everything, hopefully you'll see the difference it's made. Even though we are keeping things simple, there are opportunities to add character, helping to make our armies look more unique and interesting. One of the things we can do is help our heroes stand out more against the more numerous hordes of infantry, spending a little extra time on them, adding additional colours and highlights. Doing this also helps when they've been placed in a unit, 
and we still want to make sure we're able to see them. Something else we can spend a little more time on are the banners. All armies have them and they give us a great opportunity to get fancy. Looking back, a lot of the banners are hand painted, making them a very iconic feature, which I knew I wanted to replicate for my own army, helping to achieve that nostalgic retro style I'm after. To paint the banner yourself, we first want to make the banner, and for this I used a sheet from the Citadel paint palette, which is perfect as it's designed to be painted on originally without affecting the material or needing an undercoat. Once you have your banner, we can start blocking out simple shapes to match our chosen design. This is where reference comes in handy. I first blocked in the main details of my banner, the checkers and the moon, so I knew the layout and sizes looked right. I could then block in the background, making sure I'm happy with how it all looks, spending time refining the basic shapes ready for detailing. Honestly, from here it's not so different to painting our miniatures, adding definition and highlights. You'll notice I've mounted my banner onto something I can hold in my hand, making it easier to paint and manoeuvre around rather than trying to paint on the table surface which I tried to do first and soon realised this was a bad idea. Painting this banner was a lot of fun to do and easily one of my most favourite things about my army. Take your time with it and just enjoy the process. It doesn't even have to look amazing. The fact that you've made the effort is really going to impress anyone who sees it. The last thing to get our armies on the tabletop is to do the bases. And obviously I wanted my bases green with flock glue to them just like everybody used to do it. After doing a little research and looking at a lot of images of how bases were done, I found that there wasn't a perfect match for what we once knew was Goblin Green. I also noticed that not all bases were the same colour green, so in the end I mixed an equal amount of Warpstone Glow and Skarsnik Green, which gave me a nice middle ground that wasn't too dark or light and worked well with the colours on my Night Goblins. And after all the bases were painted, I glued a mix of flock and static grass to the top of the bases using PVA glue. To finish up this video, I want to talk about how we can transport and store our old world armies safely, but also enables us to settle for games easily and pack things away again once you're done. To transport our miniatures and store them, we first want some storage containers with lids, making sure they're also deep enough so we can place our largest miniatures inside. Once you're happy with your container, we can stick magnetic sheets to the bottom using double sided tape. You may need to cut the sheets so they can fit nicely. Having these magnetic sheets on the bottom means we can super glue magnets to the underside of our miniatures bases and keep them from moving around and preventing them from getting damaged. Something else I did to make life even easier was create my own custom movement trays which I designed and 3D printed myself. This was so I could have holes for the small round magnets so I could have any miniatures magnetised to the movement tray and the movement tray then magnetised to the bottom of the container. This means I can set up and pack away my blocks of troops more easily and quickly. If you want to do the same for your own armies then I've linked everything I've used and where to get them in the description. This has been one of my all time favourite projects and I've enjoyed every part of it. From planning and researching how I want it to look to getting it all painted including the banner and I've even enjoyed figuring out how to store it and transport it making it more enjoyable to use. So let's see how it turned out. Before we see the reveal I do want to say a massive thank you to Patreon Roo and Bats Paints who have recently become supporters on the channel. Thank you so much. If you want to support the channel as well and the content I make then you can do that by becoming a channel member or joining the Patreon. Both give you early access to tutorials and you'll be kept up to date with what I'm doing behind the scenes. The Night Goblins are now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge and inspiration to build and paint your own old world army. I believe anyone is capable, we just need to take our time and most of all enjoy what we're doing. I've got plenty of other videos and tutorials on the channel showing you how to get started and also help you improve your painting skills so make sure to go and check those out as well. If you enjoyed this tutorial then let me know by leaving a like and let me know in the comments below. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.